Hey guys, welcome back to another full topic review. And this time we'll be looking at functions and every type of problem that could be associated with them. Now, in this video, I've actually gone through four Edexcel, GCSE and IGCC mass exam problems. And these are the kind of ones you'll usually face in the more recent papers. So let's have a look at the topics you could be asked. Now, in every function problem, well, firstly, we need to know what a function is. A function looks like this. It takes a form of fx, gx or hx or something else. But it's basically an equation which has x in the expression. Like, I don't know, x squared plus 2x, or 5 plus x, anything that has x in the expression. Now, you also notice that there's other forms of notation, such as f dot or x. This is just another way of writing fx, by the way, yeah? So nothing special by it. You also learn how to exclude values from a domain, and in this case, there's only two types. There's fractions, and there's um, square roots. And we're going to have a look at that in a moment. And the other two major topics that people usually like to like to really understand are composite functions, which are written like this. And in other words, a function like g will enter f, or f will enter g, or f will enter itself, and so on. And there's also the inverse function, which by the way, isn't just stick a power negative one. There's like a special rule to do this. And um, ultimately, at the end of each of these function problems, at least if you're doing a, like, I don't know, question 23 or very last question, you might need to do some algebraic equations like solve, I don't know, fgx equals the inverse function, and so on. But anyway, let's have a look at each of these following problems right now. So the function f is such that fx equals 3x minus 5 over 4, okay? Find f minus 7, all right, this is easy. Just smash, replace x with minus 7 and smash in the calculator. So it's just going to be 3 times minus 7 minus 5 over 4, okay? So I haven't put that yet. When you do this, you should get minus 5 over 4, ooh, doo -doo, minus 13 over 2. I mean, you can leave it as a fraction or, or a decimal, yeah? Let's double check. Yep, easy. Now, express the inverse function in this form. So the inverse function is, um, you know, it's quite an easy way to look at it. All you have to do is literally rotate the layers. So just imagine fx is y, yeah? So now all you have to do is copy this function now, but replace fx here with x, and replace all the x's with y. So it'll be x equals 3y minus 5 over 4. That's it. So just literally invert these letters, yeah? Function that, we, that is y, call it x, replace x here with y. Now all you have, and then all you do is make y the subject. So to do that, firstly times 4 across, so clear the fraction. So you can have 4x equals 3y minus 5. And then add 5 across and divide by 3. So you should get 4x plus 5 over 3. And that's it. And that is your inverse. It's literally, literally so easy. Now, next one. The function g is such that gx equals the square root of 19 minus x. Okay? Find the value of f g3. So what this means is that g3 has to go inside f. So my tip is firstly work out what g3 is. So put replace this function of 3. So firstly, g3 is literally the square root of 19 minus 3, which is square root of 16, which is 4. I mean, I'm not sure this is positive or, or negative, but <laughs> I think for this case, just let's just say plus minus 4, just to be safe, yeah? Okay, it says find the value. So I'm going to assume it's positive, yeah? Let's just assume it's positive, because they don't really say anything. And then g3 is 4, then all you do is plug in the value 4 into the f function. So go back to f, Replace 3x minus 5, replace x here with 4. So it'd be 3 times 4 minus 5. So it'd be fg3, which is now f4, which is 3 times 4. God. Minus 5 over 4. That's it. And then wherever that is, is your answer. It's 4 minus 5 over 4. Yeah, and I got 7 over 4. Wait, is that right? Yeah, I think it is. Okay, not bad. Now, here's the final bit. So this is where we, this is just your understanding. Which values of x cannot be included in any domain of g? So this is talking about, when you look at this function, what values of x can we not use? Well, we're dealing with a square root function. And we should know that in the square root, you cannot have negative values inside. So essentially, looking at this, 19 minus x cannot be, well, less than zero, yeah? So it cannot be less than zero, okay? So what this means is that if you rearrange and make x a subject, you can say 19 cannot be 
well, x cannot be greater than 19. Okay, so we can say x. So which values can we not include? So the values are x that are greater than 19. So f is the function such that fx equals 4 minus 3x. Work out f5. For this one, you literally just replace x with 5 because that's what actually happened. So this means that the function at the point 5 is now 4 minus 3 times 5. And putting this in the calculator, well, this is going to give you minus 11. These kind of marks are easy, yeah? So when you do questions like this, just replace x with what you have. Now, next one, g. g is the function such that gx is 1 over 1 minus 2x. Find the value of x that cannot be included in any domain of g. Again, domain literally means values of x that you are allowed to have. Now, a common rule for these kind of questions is that it could either give you a fraction or a square root function. The rule is, is that if you're dealing with a fraction, you cannot, the denominator cannot be zero because you can't divide any number by zero. So we can say that one minus two X cannot be equal to zero. So that's exactly what the question wants. It wants to find that particular value X that we're not allowed to do. So solving this equation, so we're gonna have, we can plus two X across, we've got one can't equal two X. Dividing by two, which is one over two can't equal X. So X can't equal half, okay? That's, that's the value x we cannot, we, we're not allowed to have. Now, part C. Okay, so work out fg minus 1.5. So what this tells us is that we have to plug g into f. That's what fg means. g goes inside f. So taking this g function, we're going to pop it into f. So when you say pop it in, it literally means replace the x bit of f and put this g inside. So we're going to have fgx equals 4 minus 3 times 1 over 1 minus 2 x and now this is straightforward because it actually gives you a value it gives you minus 1.5 so now you're going to replace this x of minus 1.5 so our final answer is going to be something like 4 minus 3 1 over 1 minus 2 times minus 1.5 but then, then literally just pop this in the calculator <coughs> And if you do that, you actually get 3.25. So g is the function of domain x greater or equal to negative 3, such that gx equals this quadratic function. Now, domain, guys, is simply the values that x is allowed to take in a function. So, for example, this graph here, if we factorize it and, you know, found out where it hits the x-axis, it will look a bit like this, okay? Now, when it says x greater or equal to negative 3, this means that we only care about the curve after x equals minus 3, which is around there. So this part. So after minus 3 onwards. Okay. We don't care about the left hand side at all. So according to this question, it says write down the range of g, the inverse of g. Now, there's a rule here. If you know the domain of a function, then the range of its inverse is equal. So therefore, we can say that, oops, that y is going to be greater or equal than minus 3, which is the range bit. That's it. Now, B. <clears throat> Express the inverse function, so g minus 1, into the usual form. So this literally means um, express it into this form. That's just another way. This is just notation-based. Now, to do this one, and this is such an easy way, you look at the, the g function and just replace all the x's with y. So that's how you do the inverse. So we're going to have g, y equals y squared plus 6y and now make it equal to x okay so here's our function it's going to be this now this one is actually a lot more challenging than the other ones we've seen before in, in any textbooks even at a level standard so the way to do this and it's quite brutal is to either use a completing the square method or use the quadratic formula now and that yeah guys that's really it you gotta use a quadratic formula so let's, let's have a go at this, yeah? So what we could do is this. We can say, all right, let y squared plus 6y, and this time minus x equals 0. Now, using the quadratic formula, we're going to have, so we're going to make y the subject here. So be y equals minus b plus minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a, where a is going to be, one so the number in front of y squared which is just one 
B, which is going to be 6 because of 6y. And C is going to be weird. It's going to be minus x. We're going to see what happens and why this is. Again, this is a weird question and it's worth 4 marks, which is why it's like that. Now, replacing what we know with um, the quadratic formula, we're going to have minus 6 plus minus um, square root of b squared, which is 6 squared, which is 36 minus. Now, it's better you do this at once. So you've got 4 times 1, which is 4, times minus x. It would be f minus minus 4x. So it would be plus 4x. And it's going to be all over 2a, which is 2 times 1, which is 2. Okay, now next step here. So now we need to do some factorization, yeah? So we've got, let's have a look. So we've got, firstly, 6. Let's, let's tidy up the third over here, yeah? So we're going to have minus 6 plus minus. Now, the root 36 plus 4x, you can firstly do some factorization and factorize 4 out there. So, it'll be the square root of 4 bracket, and this would be 9 plus x over 2. And remember, this, you, because, uh, one rule this of thirds, yeah, when you've got square root of ab, this can be partitioned to the square root of a times the square root of b. In other words, your square root 4, your root 4 and 9 plus x can be partitioned as root 4 times the square root of 9 plus x x and we know the square root of 4 is 2 so this means here that we're going to have minus 6 plus minus 2 times square root of 9 plus x over 2 and then sim uh, simplifying this you're going to have minus 6 over 2 which is negative 3 minus 3 and now we're only going to keep the plus result why is because back in part a we said that the range of the uh, g inverse, in other words, uh, what the values are allowed to take, has to be greater than equal to minus 3. We've already got minus 3 here. If we chose a minus sign, it means we're going to subtract some square root result, meaning the numbers going to get even smaller. So we've got to obey the, the conditions of the range. So that's going to be plus, and then these two cancel out, so 2 over 2 cancels out, and you're left with the square root of 9 plus x. So the function f is defined as fx equals the square root of x squared plus k squared all over x for positive values of x, where k is a positive number. Now, part a, find the value of p for which the inverse function at the point p equals k. All right, so what this is telling us is firstly, we need an expression for the inverse function. So let me just change the color of my pen. Now, to find an inverse function is a very, very easy way. Just replace all these letters of y, yeah? So just say, replace fx with fy. So it's going to be the square root of y squared plus k squared over y. And now we make this equal to x, all right? In this case, um, because they want us to find the value p, we're just going to replace this x now with the letter p, because that's what they want. So let's go ahead and simplify all of this, yeah? We have to make y the subject. Now, let's see, what do we do from here? So what we could do is clear the fraction, so multiply y across. You're going to have the square root of y squared plus k squared equals uh, p times y. To get rid of the square root, square both sides, so that cancels. And both of these are now squared. Now, what we could do is move all the y terms to the left and the non-y terms to the right. Because p squared is attached, we move them both across. So it will be y squared minus p squared y squared equals, and then move k squared across, so it will be minus k squared. Now, to what you want to do here is factorize the y squared, yeah? Because you want to isolate it. So it'd be y squared factorized, you get 1 minus p squared equals minus k squared. And now lastly, you want to divide 1 minus p squared across to get rid of it. So it'd be y squared equals minus k squared over 1 minus p squared. And yeah, almost done. And now we just square root to make y the subject. So you got y equals, oh yeah, little tip, flip the position of one minus p squared. So it'd be p squared minus one. The reason why, then this part will be positive, k squared. It's the same result, just a nice little fancy way. And then yeah, put the square root sign. You literally found it. So y is basically the inverse. So we can replace this with f minus one p. And we also know that this expression is now equal to k. So all right, so here's round two. And you know, all this all three marks, nice. Nah, that's, that's that's too small. So to solve this one now for p, we have to clear the third. So clear, get rid of the square root sign. So square both side. You will get k squared over p squared minus one equals k squared. Now let's have a look. So now we can swap positions. So we can times p squared minus one across. So we get k squared equals 
k squared times p squared minus 1. Divide k squared across, so you get k squared over k squared equals p squared minus 1. Oh my god. Now, k squared over k squared cancels out. You're just left with 1. So let me just put that as 1. And lastly, now you can plus 1 across, so you can get 2 equals p squared. And then you square root both sides, you get p equals plus minus root 2. Now, <laughs> I think we're done, but we're just going to double check. Okay, blah, blah, blah. Where k is a positive number. Okay, so... Hold on. Okay, so, oh yeah, because k is a positive number, that means we're only, that means p would also in turn be a positive number. Because it has to be to get an actual positive value p. But anyway, we're just going to say therefore p is root 2. Oof, this was a long question, wasn't it? Okay, now we're on the final part. So, the function g is defined as gx equals x squared for positive x values. Now, given that gf a equals k, in other words, this is the composite function where f enters g for k greater than 1, find an expression for a in terms of k. Okay, so for this question, this literally tells us that we need to put the function of f inside the g function. In other words, replace x squared with the function squared. So, where's the function? So f we knew we know is all of this. So let's go ahead and copy this down for a second here. Yeah? So fx equals the square root of x squared plus k squared over x. And now it tells us that we're going to put this inside of inside of g. So we say therefore g f x. So we're going to take it step by step here. Yeah? We know g is x squared, so it'll be something squared. So it'll be all of this root x squared plus k squared over x squared and simplifying this further by the way when you when you're squaring a square root they cancel out so you're left with x squared plus k squared and then you square the x you get over x squared so that's what they want that's gfx now let's answer the question it says given that gf a equals k so in other words replace the x of a and make it equal to k so we're going to have let's just write it down so gf a equals a squared plus k squared over a squared so remember all the x's become a and that's supposed to equal k find an expression for a in terms of k oh man my, my tongue <laughs> so just like the inverse function you're going to do a lot of steps yeah so let's try and minimize it so first things first um, clear the fraction so times a squared across we're going to get a squared plus k squared equals k a squared and now we want to make what a subject we want to make a the subject. Okay, that's when it says find expression for a in terms of k. All right, they go all right here. Yeah, a equals. So we need to move all the a terms to the left and, and non a terms to the right. So because this is glued together, move it to the left. So you got a squared minus k squared, and then move plus k squared across will be minus k squared. Then from this point on, you can factorize a squared. So it'll be a squared one minus k equals minus k squared. And then just like the inverse one, divide 1 minus k across. So you've got a squared equals minus k squared over 1 minus k. Oh man, tongue twisters. And lastly, just like a nice little fancy trick, we can just rotate this position around. So it'd be a squared equals positive k squared over k minus 1. Again, when you do this, it, it just switches the sign at the top. I don't know if it's important, probably not. And then lastly, square root this and you're going to get uh, a equals the square root of k squared, which is k over root k minus 1. And I think that's it. Is it positive? Yep, k is positive. So, yeah, it looks good to me. I think this is the final result. And we leave it here. Oh, man.